How's it going? You know what's cool? Electricity. It powers things like lights. The welder. You know what's not cool? The cost, both financially and to the environment. I feel like that last one's kind of really important. Anyway, nothing enacts change faster than a friendly competition. So, ringing up fellow YouTuber Daniel, or DK the Welder, we've devised a competition based on three factors to create the best renewable. The first, most important, coolness. Mm -hmm. I, I'm only saying that because that's kind of hopefully my only my strength. Yeah. Anyway, next is cost and then performance. So based on those three factors, we'll be able to decide who is the victor in creating renewable energies. Did I say friendly competition? Because I feel that we're edging away from there. Just, just a tad. The first type of renewable that probably comes to mind is solar. Slapping your panel right on your roof as I am currently perched and taking the energy from the sun. Which sounds great. But you know what's not great? It's night half the time, so that doesn't sound very efficient. The next option is wind, and more specifically, a wind turbine. Now, here's the curved Darius. Now, I think because of its uniqueness, it's beautiful. Hmm. In fact, it just looks like a piece of art. So the fact that it's functional, am I getting some cool points there? Now, obviously it's not all sunshine and roses. They're prone to self-destructing. Yeah. Bit of foreshadowing to how the commercial ones went, and why, why they didn't continue it. Anyway, what we need to do now is testing, because we have cool factor, we need to work on performance. And that means we need to figure out the correct size and shape of the aerofoils. To finish off our testing and come to a conclusion about the aerofoils, we need to actually see if this can actually generate or harness any power from our wind. Our fan. Proof of concept has done its job. We were able to generate 0.04 of a volt with no load. It's something. But uh, we know it kind of works, which is great. So why don't we make a one meter sized scale replica of what I'm actually going to do. Correct profiles, everything's correct. And hopefully we'll get a more definitive answer of how it performs out in the wild. To make our profile, we're going to use foam. It's lightweight and inexpensive, which is fantastic. But how are we going to cut it out? Well, we need to make ourselves a foam wire cutter. Right, so we've got our foam wire cutter in the vise. Now, to cut out aerofoils, I've gone ahead and got the you know, profiles that we're trying to follow on each end and we simply just trace around. Now the issue is we need to keep this as parallel to everything that we're cutting as well as making sure that we aren't putting too much tension on the wire otherwise you won't get a straight cut. You'll also see I've got a little T cut out or a little notch that's so we can slide a piece of wood in there to reinforce everything um, because, because it's fun. It's not very strong. Look at that! It is spinning and working, it's self-starting, there is literally, there is wind, but very little wind, I would just call it fast walking air, and yet it's still working. So I think we have nailed efficiency, the geometry and the size of the airfoils are on point. Look at it, it's accelerating, and there is so little wind. Very chuffed. I'm going to call that a whirling success. All the testing, I think, validates the viability of the whole design. I think we've got the coolness and elegance all sorted. We haven't got performance, though. So why don't we scale this up to two meters and hope that gives us the performance that we want? Keyword, hopefully. Anyway, let's make some massive airfoils. Foam.
Okay, we are fiberglassing our airfoils. Now, I've selected fiberglass because it is cheap, super strong, and lightweight. So, not only are we going to get the performance because of its, you know, lightweight and strength as a composite, but also, you know, we're reducing our costs. So, a big old double win-win situation, which is exactly what we like to hear around here. Right, we have our fiberglass aerofoils and they don't work. Now, it's because they're too stiff. So who, who saw that coming? They, they, they're lightweight, but uh, yeah, they don't bend. Now, I can force them, but they'll crease. We don't want to do that in uh, at all. So why don't we cut a whole bunch of little slits in, do kerfing. You don't woodworking, do little cuts and then get a nice little fold going. So we'll do that. Hopefully it works with the uh, fiberglass. Uh, I don't know here. Yeah. Right, it's all bent and uh, looking looking pretty good actually. So we'll just fiberglass it up, and you've seen that before. So um, I shall see you in three, two, one, and we're done. Finally, it, 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 it was terrible. Now I finally got good at fiberglassing just at the end, um, but now I'm so scarred from doing it, I, I can't imagine myself doing any more fiberglass. Anyway, you'll see the uh, teal edge here. That's just a bit of power cord. I had to rebuild the trailing edge. As we pulled the fiberglass super tight, we crushed down that foam edge and uh, we created the Finley Aerofoil, which is terrible. So, rebuilt the edge, got a tight radius and rebuilt it up. So now we're closer to the NARCA 21, which is uh, what we need. Mm. Anyway, let's stand them back and get on to the next thing. Well, we have all of our parts cut out. Now, what we're going to do is work our way from the top to the bottom because I, I just, I don't really know where to start with this. Yeah. Anyway, these are the mounting plates. This is what we're actually going to mount our airfoils to. So, start there and see what happens. Right, the bearing holder, I've just taken it out of the freezer, so hopefully we can whack it inside here. Now this extension here is to allow for a coupler to join our generator to the drive shaft, and then this top part is where we can actually space between our bearings, you know, so we have a bit of rigidity. Anyway, this is cold and it's warming up, so let's whack it in place. And here's the monolith, yes. Oh, hold on, I'm getting a phone call. It's Daniel. G'day mate, how's it going? Yeah, good, I'm standing in front of my miniature wind turbine, yeah, yeah. I went for the curved Darius and I made my aerofoils out of fiberglass to keep the weight down. It's kind of cool. Yeah, well that brings me to the fact that I put all my skill points into the coolness tree 
and unfortunately this has meant that it's um it, it, it's not working we have zero performance yeah anyway how about yourself what did you get up to i'm doing okay mine's up just waiting on some wind so mine's a savonius type or a drag type but it's in a spiral shape and it hangs from a rope so as it catches the wind it acts a bit more like a vertical one as well um, i've sort of gone for a low cost design that anybody can make. So I just went to see some performance out of it. Right, yours is, yours is working, is it? Mm. Well, I'll um, I'll have to go because I've got just a little bit of work to do then. Yeah. Well, we better get cracking. You might be wondering what I'm gonna use as a generator. Well, I have acquired a washing machine. I say acquired for no reason. Also, if I'm wearing the exact same outfit for the rest of the video, we have our Fisher & Paykel Smart Drive motor. Now I'll have a link in the description to the resource on how to rewire these for generators. But we're just going to do a nice simple start configuration. Super simple so we get 24 volts at 48 RPM. At least I hope. in a bit of a storm but I thought I'd give you some real-time uh, information I don't really know what to say it doesn't work unfortunately now it's very windy and gusty and I still can't get it to overcome the resistance of the motor whether that's back EMF or something else now if you have an idea please let me know in the comments below because I'd love to know my thought here is we remove the generator and just get it spinning as a bit more of an art piece and hopefully coolness brings us forth because um, no, nothing else has worked out for me, bar putting like a tiny DC motor in there. roaring success was it now it did work when we had removed the motor which is obviously a bit of an issue because we have a zero performance not not great but it did work without it now it only worked in high wind speeds which is not ideal so if we we're to optimize this and actually get this to work as a generator and to actually harness wind power I think if we added a Salvinius wind turbine in the middle, it's a drag type, but it's really good in low wind speeds. It has a lot of torque. We'd be able to overcome the motor, always be generating electricity with low wind speed, and we'd get more, we'd be able to harness it with the Darius on the outside. That would give us an all-round design that would be performance in low and high wind speeds, which would be kind of ideal. Yeah. Now, obviously, make sure you check out Daniel's video. He's done a pretty unique approach, and it's... Uh, it's better than mine, so yeah, make sure you check that out and then vote on how well we did. I, I feel like I did okay in coolness, but uh, performance and cost are uh, lacking to say the least. Mm. Anyway, if you enjoyed this one, maybe a thumbs up, that'd be pretty cool. And uh, if you want to see more, then a subscribe. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I shall um, hopefully see you in the next one. See ya.